So this video improves and expands on one of my existing and old animations that you can see playing along the side. And I want to give you ideas for working with a weave. So different thicknesses and different looks. And a bit of a challenge for you actually. I've got some colours that I've used, but I want to give you a bit of a creative challenge to really switch on and engage with your own creativity and that process. So that process of picking colours, um, testing colours, their combination, their placement. Be experimental and don't always necessarily duplicate a colour scheme or duplicate something in its entirety because you don't necessarily get anything out of that and that process then becomes something else. And if you really engage with your own creativity, it might not be super duper beautiful the first time, but you learn something from it and the second and the third time, you just get better at better at finding a way to something that you are pleased with. As ever, in the caption I've got the chapters and links to uh, and about the equipment that I've used. And also do visit my website. Anyway, enjoy. So we'll begin with our vertical and mark its centre and this I'm going to open up to six centimetres. So this will be quite light because I deliberately don't want it to be too prominent in the final piece. So we'll draw our circle and I'm doing the constructions I've done before but sideways, hope that makes sense and this is method one that I've chosen. So I've only done this and this on one side. I'm going to open up the compass to more than, so about here, three quarters, so that I can do the vertical, or in this case, the horizontal. Okay, and then do this one as well. And now we're going to open up the radius to this distance. So I'm just going to put the compass point there so it can feel the point as well as see the point. Well, I can see and feel the point. So it's falling into that little divot. And so I'm going to swing it around from there to this line. And now I'm going to put the compass point on here and repeat that idea of finding the radius so it falls into that point. And it is mark at the top and at the bottom and then use either of those marks to walk the distance round and every time you do this potentially okay so that is a little bit too big so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to that point and I'm going to marginally adjust it and do a longer line and then mark that one round and hopefully by the time I get to the one that I want to yeah it lands exactly so that distance this distance I adjusted it by the tiniest like one fifth of that so I've stepped it around from this way, going um, clockwise and anti-clockwise. Now I'm going to go from this side and do the same and hope that it will land on itself. Just about. And now I'm going to use them to do my 10 divisions all the way around. So I'll start over here and then work my way around drawing them in lightly. I notice I'm extending it a little. Actually, let me extend it a lot because we know that the uh, tips of the rosette are going to be beyond the initial circle. So ignoring that vertical, we've now got 10 divisions. So we have all that we need for the pattern. Let me show you this example here. This is the equivalent of what I've got below. That's my horizontal and that's my vertical. So wherever your petal you want it to be pointing, you need to do a line on the intersection either side of it. And you're only doing, firstly, five points 
or using five points and then the other points we'll use to do the behind behind petals now the way we're going to start so this is going to be pointing to the left I'll go to the point above it and this is this I put a pen in now and this is the same radius as the five division so I'm going to put the point above and you've got to be very conscious of where you start and stop because in this case I'm going to be drawing drawing directly in pen so I'm going to start on the radial just either side of it and stop at it and at the center I'm going to stop at the division either side let me show you okay so at the top can you see I've stopped on those two lines either side of that and that's where I put my point and then at the bottom I've stopped either side of the uh, same line so there's a gap there so this was my first this petal is going to be here so I'm going to use this and either you can do it in pencil first and then pick out the lines you want or you can do what I'm doing which is uh, starting and stopping full concentration and as you do more lines you start seeing where they will meet each other so these guys meet each other but I have tended to make mistakes on the other tips so one two so not this one not this one this one so like I said the vertical lines a bit dangerous ignore it and your inaccuracy might show up here where the things don't point or meet each other so well but carry on I say and then you can improve it for the next okay so not this one and then this so can you see how it's meeting the previous pal so go all the way to the center nearly and then at the the line it's on the gap before it and then this one's free and then stop okay one more to go And the last one's a little bit easy in a way because you can start seeing what shapes you've got. Now, if you go to the point that's in the middle, you'll be able to complete the behind petals. What an official name. And this time, you kind of just have to stop and start at the petals and the radial lines. So I started at the front petal and stopped at the radial line. Now if I go to the next point, it will complete it. and do the same there now go to the next point and you're working your way around completing one and then starting another okay so there we have just the line drawing okay so this gorgeousness that i'm so super proud of is the outcome of the next section of the video and i cannot believe this just kind of organically arrived whilst i was you know doing what i was doing with you guys and uh, for you guys um so it's beautiful and i i just it made me really want to go on about letting yourself be free and be creative and that's how you can end up with things that you've seen somewhere so this look of these uh four sections in the intersection it's really moroccan and it just adds such dynamism to the pattern i love it and i'm dead pleased with this anyone want to buy it please uh let me know anyway let's get on deciding how thick your weave is the width of this depends on for me the smallest shape because if you end up having it too thick then this smallest shape might disappear and become a knot which actually can be quite beautiful, but that knot becomes its stopping point. So I'm going to do a thicker version of this just to show you the different looks you can go for. So I'm going to use a metallic pen, entirely experimental, because I want it to be thick and different to the black lines. So um, usually give it a good shake, test it out on another paper to make sure it's flowing well. And then if you're satisfied with it, you can get going. Do be careful if you need to stop halfway through and give it another shake, because as it flows, it's not flowing so well. Um, and this is a PBO for artist marker. Very reliable, in my opinion. So now this needs to go in your pen holder, if you have one. So what you need to do is see your radius, and we're going to do the larger lines. Actually, I'm going to do the smaller lines. I keep changing my mind. 
and then give it a good tightening so what we're going to do is redraw this pattern twice um once every single line is smaller than the black line and second time every line is bigger than the black line and the starting points are your radial lines so these pencil lines which you can barely see they are where i will be starting and stopping so sometimes it'll be a bit further than the curves and sometimes it'll be a bit shorter than the curves so let's begin So I definitely got a little bit confused at the centre and I stopped a little bit short so I'm going to lengthen some of them to make all the points I need. I'd rather err on the side of caution than do the line too long. Okay so that's all the insides done for the five front petals now we need to do the same for the other petals. Okay, so now this distance between the black line and the golden line, I need to increase so that it's on the other side, that same distance to say it's a six millimetres. I need to just check that if I mark a line on the other side, I'm just going to put a little tiny dot down and measure it, it's the same distance. So that is looking like 0.5 mil. Okay, so once you're satisfied with that, you can do it by eye or measure, you are now going to do the lines that are bigger and the main thing you'll notice is the tips of the pattern go out so I'm going to now start here and start looking at that thickness that you've made so this is now the new thickness okay let's do this I'm noticing my pen is getting a little bit dry and shake it and tighten it and when I do that just put the lid back on in case it fires out anything and also press it a few times so by pressing it you can release the flow oh and it's singing again so don't be afraid to stop and check and redo Look, I've totally lost my plot. Here we go, here we go. So checking all of these, they've all been thickened up, the front petals, and I can see at the centre, apart from one tiny gap that I can just do freehand, they're all meeting each other. So now I need to do the small behind petals. And notice I'm starting to make these uh, little, this is what I was talking about, little rhombus shapes. And there we have it, the finished pattern where everything's been thickened up and I've still got a tiny star and I've still got these petals in between. So it's a lot thicker than the previous one, but it can take it if I make it any smaller which would be really nice to do actually um, you could end up with a bit of a knot in the middle which is quite attractive in its own right now my black lines are quite prominent because I, I wanted you to be able to see something so it was a layer of pencil I could have carried on with a layer of pencil and then added gold and also I did a lot of the lines live so to speak um, so therefore that stopping and starting I had to think about you could do the whole thing in pencil and then erase what you don't need which is often something I do and I kept the overlaps and not making it look as though they're going under and over so I could paint it in a particular way I'm ready to paint and I did a couple of things between how I left it a moment ago and now I extended the black lines into these squares so they are also four little sections 
within that overlap and also I had to look at the gold lines at certain angles just to make sure that they're all a decent thickness I think I caught them all but um, I'm now ready to paint I'm using Gohinu Hardmouth Brilliant Watercolours they're really cheap they're really vibrant I'm going to mix some together let's go By drawing the double weave, you've got some shapes that kind of crop up as though they're a check checkboard or checkerboard. So therefore, you can work your way around the pattern quite easily. I use just three colours, sometimes just on their own, sometimes letting them bleed. And my final thing I think I'm going to do is silver in these five petals. And this paint, it's dye based. So even when I lifted off the paint, can you see there's a, a bit of blue here? So um, once everything's dry, I'll find a way to fix that. And this slightly wobbly bit here, I'll see if I want to fix that as well. Um, so sometimes when you have a mistake, there's something here as well. Leave it be for a while and you'll find a solution, hopefully. Or just let it be, you know, what is perfection anyway? I'm going to apply, firstly, silver gouache. This is all very experimental. Let's see how we go. Okay, so here's the final outcome of the next section of the video. Um, I didn't quite get round to fixing the colours, but that's okay. But amazing what you can do freehand. So um, I hope you do give that a go. Anyway, let's get uh, started with the tracing, transferring, painting and metallic outline. If you want to create an actual weave where there's the illusion of channels going under and over, then my preferred method is with tracing paper. Um, or when you do these lines, you can do the initial line very faint and the lines that I'm about to do very considered. However, you know, it, it just requires that concentration. Um, when you're doing this, besides drawing the lines, it's really useful to mark and note the centre and the points where you put your compass so that if you need to retouch anything on the other paper, you've got it all prepared. So let's begin by taping down the tracing paper and then marking those key points. I'm using two B pencils that I've got a shed load of. On this particular drawing 
as one of the rejects. I don't have the behind leaves. There's got to be a better way of saying the behind leaves. It doesn't even make sense. If this becomes blunt as I'm doing it, I'm just going to replace it with a few others. Welcome to my um, final resting place of short pencils. So I don't have any shortage of short pencils um, that are 2B. So we're going to do the ones that are wider than the original line. And can you see this is the whole move? So this is what you're going to draw. So you're going to have, for example, it will go over, under, gap, and then it will be over, under. So you'll be alternating even though you've got a gap. So if you do it systematically, your head may be able to cope with it. And there's two things you can do. Either you can try and consider the gaps for the unders and over as you go, or ignore them and then erase them afterwards. And I'm going to go for the second because it's far easier. So let's go. So all the way and then stop. And then continue. And remember the radial lines are the stopping and the starting points. Having a piece of paper to slip underneath is really handy so then it can show you what you've done without having the other line to consider. So the weave I'm going to deal with afterwards. So I've done all the lines bigger than the original, now I'm going to do the lines smaller than the original. Again systematically working around clockwise, I'll start at a given point, there we go, um, so there we go, and again So you can see it's coming together at the centre. Let's do the behind ones. And there it is all done. So now there's two things you can do. Get rid of any overshoots wherever you might see them and you can add in any lines where there are gaps and now work out the unders and overs so these five are actually intersections so if I always do this motion I can work my way around and erase the ones I don't need and keep turning your paper and train your eye and your hand to see the same intersection and give the same treatment and before you know it you've done five of them so those five are done so this is giving the illusion of going over so the next one's going to go under so I raise it in the opposite direction I'll put those crosses back in and then again look for that same intersection five times and get rid of the erasings in a sec and give it a clean give it a tidy but basically basically it is done let's see so with the lines underneath it's hard to see that but as soon as you slip a little piece of paper underneath you can get the clarity to check you've got what you need okay on to the next stage 
So I have a new piece of watercolour paper and this I'm going to remove and then turn upside down but take off the masking tape so you can reuse it turn it upside down now because I've got A3 width tracing paper as well I'm just going to put it down like so and then with a spoon transfer it Now, if you did want to redo these lines, outline them in a metallic or in another pen, then you can use those crosses. I've decided that I'm just going to do this in a really loose, shady, fady way and embrace the softness. So we've got the essence of the painting and we know that it's got this under and overness. So I'm going to uh, use that. Now that it's all had a chance to dry, I had to do some touch-ups and I probably need to do some more. I've decided I'm going to do freehand curves. Oopsie. I'm just making sure this pen is ready for action. And if you've never done this before, and you don't mind having a go, I highly recommend it. If you use your wrist, as the center of your circle and then this pen moving in a curve you can create some really nice controlled curves so let's have a go So I finished outlining in pen. I did do a few touch-ups, but I think the colour could do with a few more touch-ups. But yeah, basically, it's done. So that's your two different takes on this motif. And um, I'd love to see how you get on. Uh, do visit my website and enjoy.